American Lockdown. I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, there is a, there's a growing consensus in the scientific community that we are on the same track in the United States of America as China and as Italy was, but we're running about 50 days behind China and about 11 and a half days behind Italy when it comes to dealing with the COVID-19 novel coronavirus. Um, because of that, um, there are some scientists who are saying that within a few weeks, we're going to be in a situation where the rest of the country is going to have to start doing what they've done in New Rochelle, uh, which is a suburb of New York City, um, and have essentially banned large group gatherings and have put in place other kinds of restrictions and uh, actually brought in the National Guard to help clean things up and to prevent the disease from spreading. Um, as I say that, Bill, I know that conservatives in particular are in an awkward position because we're always skeptical of big government and especially of big government seizing the opportunity of a crisis to exert additional controls over our lives. Um, what do you think is the appropriate conservative response to the prospect of your town or your county or or even your whole state being in in effect a, a quarantine well no one's talking about that are they uh, well, yeah, actually, they are talking about that. I mean, it's already happening in New Rochelle in a one square mile area surrounding a place where an infection happened. I believe it was at a synagogue and there was a particular individual who was tested and they've actually put up a cordon around that and basically said no large group gatherings that people can still go out shopping if they can find a store that's open. People can travel freely individually, but they're not supposed to gather in groups. And there are some other restrictions put in place. But Italy has now locked down the entire country. China uh locked down Wuhan and the surrounding province. province. And um, there is some suggestion now that more and more, at least local governments at the uh, municipal and county level, will begin to put in place these restrictions to say, for example, your church can't meet on Sunday because it's a large group gathering and it risks the spread of the coronavirus. I think I'm a little more worried about that than I am of the coronavirus. I do. Uh, what I would expect would happen, what I would like to have happen, and what I think will happen um, are that that individual American people as groups or as individuals, as affiliations, whatever, will begin to do this on their own. I certainly, I certainly think that for a, a, a church to say something to the effect of for the next several weeks, we we may not have services or we may have smaller services or, or, or whatever. I don't care what their solution is. That's as long as the, the church comes up with it or the, the, the YMCA comes up with it or whatever. What I think is more dangerous than the coronavirus is having federal uh, troops driving through the streets of America with, with you know, with uh, M4s enforcing um, uh, the breakup of large groups of people uh, because because of the uh, COVID-19 virus. I can envision a world, I can envision a, a scenario rather, where that would be necessary, but this doesn't seem to be that scenario. I think common sense and I think people's um, fundamental willingness to want to do what they can to prevent the spread of, of, of this virus while we're working on vaccines and, and, and better understanding it, finding out how long the lifespan is. Is it declining in China? Is there a is there a, a hill? And if there is, how wide is it? How long is it? There's no question that the worst of it is coming for the United States that we are, as you say, probably 50 days behind China and 11 days behind Italy. And now the question, the big question is, What's happening in China and Italy? Are the numbers going up? Are they going down? Are they steady? This this is a, a separate concern, but but I don't I I think the idea of a of a of a government deciding arbitrarily to to basically revoke our First Amendment freedom. Uh, 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 to gather peacefully is um, is a far bigger danger than uh, than this virus will ever be. Yeah, and it's a question in my mind as well. You know, it's one thing to say, here's how the Chinese government responded. And by the way, uh, President, right. President Xi Jinping has showed up in Wuhan for the first time since the crisis began. He wore a mask and he addressed some soldiers who were wearing masks and talked about how they're, you know, starting to round the bend, so to speak. Um, okay. But it's one thing to, to compare us to the Chinese government. It's a little bit different when you're talking about a European uh, democracy like Italy. Uh, 
In the last week, I've received emails from my own employer, which is a retail uh, store, my son's employer, a different retail store, as well as a local church that we attend. And all of them were telling their customers or their congregants um, steps that they're taking, including, uh, you know, increasing the availability of hand sanitizer, uh, right. increasing the regimen of cleaning the facilities. Um, in the case of the church, they're changing the way they do the Lord's Supper to make sure that nobody else is touching your your uh, bread or your wine, so to speak, before uh, you do. Um, so they're they're all voluntarily taking these precautions. Do you think because of the nature of the United States, it's just different and that's how we'll approach it? I think it's different and I think it's different um, for, for two reasons. Number one, I think it's different because this nation is predicated on the entire structure of the government and the entire structure of the national character has been predicated on the idea that this is a device for resisting tyranny under any form. And emergencies are where tyrannies usually take the most advantage of their people. And if there's no emergency handy, then we'll create one. Maybe we'll set fire to the Reichstag or whatever else we need to do in order to pass emergency measures, which people will then use to obey um, laws that they would not have otherwise obeyed. And in the case, and in the case of the First Amendment, we're not only just talking about laws, we're talking about natural rights, innate rights that are innate to human beings that the government did not grant us in the first place and has no business taking away from us. So what I'm saying is, from a philosophical, moral, and personal point of view, uh, as well as a political point of view, if, if 10,000 Americans want to get together on a square and they've been advised that this is not good for their health, then they get to get together on the square and if, and 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 if they want to just go around town licking doorknobs then that's their business uh, but the government this, would say no it's not because you've invaded the commons you've you've invaded the space that we could haven't affect invaded other the commons the commons belong to all of us we haven't invaded the commons but you're not the all commons of us. are common. You, 10 thousand people do not constitute all of us well no, that's true, but the commons belong to the commons. And to say that I've invaded the commons is to say that I've invaded some place that I already have access to. It is it is the commons. You're you're talking about keeping me out of the commons. That's what you're talking about. Now, the reason I said that Americans are different about this is because I think that is more important than whatever health consequences would flow from the coronavirus. I think the ability of a government to to simply arbitrarily say no at certainly at this level of risk, if we were seeing bodies stacked like cordwood, you could conceivably make the case that this was a, 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 an enormous national emergency. But even then, I'd be I would have some serious, serious questions about it. But in this case, absolutely not. Now, the reason I think that this is going to be different is because I suspect that the American people are used to being more self-sufficient than certainly than the Chinese and certainly than the Italians. They're more independent and at the same time, they're more self-sufficient. They're more capable, I think, of, of making their own decisions. And certainly, certainly every indication I've seen in American culture, I don't think there's any exceptions that I'm aware of, well, has been to be, has, has, to, has been to be erring on the side of caution voluntarily. And that is what a free people should be doing. Bill, you yourself have said that the trigger for some kind of additional action doesn't have to be just a, a body count, but rather the fact that uh, public health systems and hospitals and doctor's offices could become overwhelmed with people who are concerned, may, may be uh, you know, asymptomatic, may not even have any kind of virus, but because of the you know, general fear or panic, they could overwhelm facilities. Um, I happen to know personally in Texas that Republicans, while they are supposed to be small government people who want the government government to get out of your lives, they will respond to a few phone calls to their office calling for action. I uh, asked the lieutenant governor of Texas one time, I said, why are you guys pushing legislation to require a local referendum vote anytime a local body of politicians wants to raise taxes? And his answer was basically because people have called his office asking for it without uh, looking at the principle that basically says, let those decisions be made at the lowest level. I could easily see the lieutenant governor and our state representatives getting phone calls that say, hey, we're concerned about this. Shouldn't this town be on lockdown? Well, if, if people get calls like that, it's an indication of how badly we have failed in the education of our population in terms of what this country is and what it's about. This 
this is a core issue. It really is. If, if you are one of those people who thinks that either the federal, state, or local government should have the right to legally mandate for whatever period of time, and there's another part of it that's 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 particularly terrible, is what is the period? They're not, they're not saying for a period of time, indefinitely. If you believe that it's okay for state, federal, or local officials to arbitrarily decide to revoke the First Amendment for an undis for for uh, an undisclosed period of time, then you have to ask yourself, why am I allowing this local city council or this one politician who's susceptible to two phone calls from nutty people, why am I allowing this person to make this decision? They don't have a right to make this decision. You can, if you, if you agree that your right to self, your right to assembly can be abrogated by a local government at its whim, then you also agree that a local government can abrogate your Second Amendment rights at its whim. And this is not something I particularly want to do. It's not a road I think we should be going down on. And I, and I don't think we will go down that road because I think the American people have fundamental common sense. But absolutely, you do not you do not have the ability to rescind the First Amendment on the basis of what three council members have decided to do based on a number of people calling them and, and, and giving them an earful. If you, if you really want to go down that road of government, then you don't have government anymore. You don't have a republic. You don't have principles. You don't have laws. You don't have a constitution. This is a great test of our system. And I'm really, really glad you brought this up. It is one thing for a, for a city government to say, this procedures are, are, really critically important for public health and and we really strongly recommend that you um that you uh abide by these procedures and if a private company wants to say we're closing our offices until this until this thing is done that's the business of the private company and i'm fine with all of this but for for any government to come in and say no we've decided that large groups of people are not allowed to gather during this crisis then the questions that come up are who decided how long and what is the level of crisis and who decides that and and once you open that door, then, then, there, then the definition is as arbitrary as anything else. And look, there is always, we talked about this on our Right Angle show about Afghanistan. <clears throat> One of the things about understanding how life works and weighing risk and reward is to not only see what happens, but to see what doesn't happen. This is a really, really important mental um, ability to develop. If we go down plan A, what would have happened if we gone down plan B? If we decide that this virus is worth the destruction of our constitutional First Amendment freedom to gather, then we have made a grave mistake because then, well, first of all, because they have got, they have not got the right, Scott. The government, state, local, federal, I don't care, does not have the right to tell me that I cannot freely associate, peaceably gather with my fellow citizens in the United States of America. They do not have the legal authority to do that. They don't. And, <clears throat> And if they want to know where I'm coming from on this, I will show them the declaration. I, I mean, I will show them the Bill of Rights. So and they don't have the power to do it. Local authorities could say things like, we're shutting down government offices during the course of this because we don't want our people to come to work. Or a municipal That's first a different, responder could, crew could say, look, if you choose to gather in large groups like this, we can't promise that we're going to be able to support any kind of medical needs that arise uh, as a result of that. Or a county health office both, could say, look, we've only those, got such so much capacity to deal with this testing. And so we can't go beyond that. And you're, you're on your own. But setting rules all of for those, other people is the challenge, I guess. All, well, well, no, all of those are legitimate. Those are, every single one of them is a legitimate response to, to, a, to a public health crisis. And <clears throat> to say I support them or don't support them, I certainly support them because it seems to me that if, that if city government decides we're closing city hall and we're closing the DMV and we're closing all of these things, then that is well within their rights to do so. If the if the first responders, if the uh, if the paramedics in town or or the, the 
or, or the hospital say, if you hold this large group of people, we cannot, well, first of all, we can't guarantee your safety. No one can guarantee anybody's safety. But they say, if you have this 10,000 person gathering, we may not have the resources to cope with this. That is a fair, intelligent, adult warning of the consequences. And finally, um, for for all of this to be taking place is an appropriate response to to a healthcare crisis but it is not it is not the abrogation of our first amendment rights which are not bestowed upon us by state federal or local governments in the first place they do not have the authority to stop us from freely and peacefully assembling as a people they can give us plenty of reasons why we shouldn't and in a case like this they're very very good reasons but if you open the door to that kind of arbitrary decision, the game is over. We should have the right. If, if we, we have the right, we shouldn't have the right. We do have the right. We have the inborn natural law right to assemble, to say what's on our mind, to do all of these things. And if those things end up costing us our health or our lives, well, those are the consequences of our free actions. And since we've been advised by medical authorities, civil authorities, and so on, we should be fully willing to accept the responsibility of those actions, which may mean the death of everybody, you and your family. But, but these things are not mutually exclusive, but you've got to make sure that you've got to make sure that that separation takes place. I can't see any particular reason. I'll tell you what, Scott, it's pretty simple, really. If you really want to know, I'll boil it down for you right now. The only reason I would get into a crowd of 10,000 people right now would be because it would be because the government said I am legally not allowed to do it. I think that's about the only thing right at this particular moment that would motivate me enough to go ahead and do something like that that is a public health risk. If the government actually said you are forbidden to gather on the streets and more, anything more than a group of 10 or five, as if that mattered, by the way, what's the number? Right? If what's the number? Is it a hundred people? Is it fifty? Is it ten? If if it's ten people, if if anything, ten people or more is not allowed, then are you telling me that as long as we've got nine people, we're all safe? Is that what you're telling me? It's a. This is why this is a, a ridiculous argument, and why this principle stands. So. I think the American people are going to do the smart thing. I think they're going to behave themselves. I think they're going to, despite this initial worry and this panic and this hoarding of toilet paper and all the rest of it, I think this country is going to acquit itself well. I think the government has acquitted itself very well. But if this if this town has decided to deprive its citizens of its First Amendment rights within a one mile square radius, a one mile radius or a one mile square block, whatever the case may be, then they've already decided that they can deprive them of whatever rights they want to at whatever radius they happen to appoint. And this needs to be fought tooth and nail. And it needs to be elucidated. <clears throat> it needs to be clear. We need to be clear why we're having this argument. I need to be clear, and I hope I'm being clear about why I would go out and join a group of 10,000 people. And even if I knew every one of them was already infected with, the, with COVID-19, if there was 10,000 people outside, every one of them with the virus who were there protesting the idea that the that, that were there and not protesting in open defiance of a government that told them that they couldn't do it then i would join that group of 10,000 people and i'd suffer the consequences and i think that would be a a a very very well-informed worthy noble and appropriate response to the greater threat than this virus Ladies and gentlemen, you can join the rebellion from the progressive narrative at BillWhittle.com. And there's very, very little risk of infection there since it is virtual. You are, uh, you have comments and you have a member written blog all in a place on the website that you can't see unless you're a member at BillWhittle.com. In addition, you have some backstage content. Uh, Steve and Bill and I, Stephen Green and Bill Whittle and I uh, make it a policy to stay as far away from each other as possible at all times. And so, you know, Bill's in California, Steve's in Colorado, I'm in Texas. You are perfectly safe becoming a member at BillWhittle.com. Now, the ideas, on the other hand, can be infectious. And we encourage you to engage in those and to be part of the contagion of liberty that's spreading around the world, thanks to our members at BillWhittle.com. For Bill Whittle. Are you saying this, are you saying this means we should stop our, our weekly Licking of the um, of the of the right angle doorknob and then <laughs> and then faxing it on to, <laughs> and mailing it on to the next or the guy. camera lens either way. <laughs> All right, we'll suspend this. We'll suspend this for a brief period of time under under severe protest. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for watching. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott.